Ooh, look at that. I am excited about this one. What this is, is the Minus Form Desk Mini. It is a little mini computer that has a AMD Ryzen processor. Now, I absolutely love Ryzen processors. In my main computer, you can see it right there. That has a Ryzen 3700X in it, and it is phenomenal. Now, this Ryzen is a little bit different. This is a mobile Ryzen processor, and it's not even the latest one. It's a, a 2500. Uh, I think it's a Pro 2500, and it has the uh, integrated graphics and all that. So it's in no means a powerhouse. But for the price and all that, I think it was a good move. You could get this little mini Ryzen PC for as low as, I think, around $300 if you get the bare bones model that doesn't have RAM or a hard drive. Put your own in, and you're good to go. Uh, this one, I was a little lazy, so this was $500. It includes a 512GB M.2 SSD as well as two 8GB sticks of DDR4 memory. Another thing I'm really happy about is this comes with uh, Wi-Fi version 6, so Wi-Fi speeds are much faster versus the Wi-Fi 5. So basically in this video what we're going to be doing is unboxing it, breaking it down, taking a look inside of the actual unit, doing some benchmark gaming tests, fun things like that. So without wasting too much time, let's dive on in. So this is the box that this specific device came in. It has all the information you'd expect on, including all these specifications here on the back. But we're going to ignore this for now because I'm actually going to go over that throughout the video. We have the manual that it comes with. Let's go ahead and move that to the side. Right here we have a little tab so we can actually pull out the computer. And this is the computer right here. It is about, I would say, the size of a Mac Mini. You see the size of my hand. I have pretty big hands and I mean it's pretty small. So actually in the box here we have the power cord. We have both an HDMI and display cord. And then in here, I'm not going to pull this out, but you can see we have a little mounting bracket. If you did want to mount it either to like the back of your monitor or onto the wall or wherever you wanted. But with that said, let's go ahead and check out this guy. So I'm going to take off that and here it is. So let's check out some of the IO and the ports we get. So here is the front of the device. You see right here we have a USB type C. All the USB ports on this device are going to be USB 3s. But this one right here, it's yellow because even when the device is off, you can still pull power from it. Whether if that's to charge your phone or if you have some sort of peripheral that has an LED light, you can plug it through there to keep it on all the time. In addition, you see we have a little audio headphone jack there. And then right here is the power button. If we look at this side, we have nothing. This side, nothing. But then on the back, it gets a little fun. Right here, we have dual gigabit ethernet connectors. Now that's really cool because Eventually what I do plan on using this for is to host a server. Uh, right here you have your display and HDMI, your power cord right here, and then two more USB Type 3s. Right here on the top there's a little sticker that says to open this up you simply push down right here and it should pop open. So let's see if that works as described. Let's go ahead and push. Alright, and then we should be able to just open up the top here. And you can see how easily accessible this is. Now we have full access to everything that is within this little computer. So now we are looking a little bit closer. We can see a little bit better into the device. Right here we have our two RAM slots. It's 266 pin, as well as our M.2 drive right there. It's shipped with two sticks of Kingston 8GB RAM, as well as a Kingston 512GB M.2 SSD. Now if we get a little bit closer and we pull out this cord right here, we see it's a little expansion slot. There's enough room in here to fit a little 2.5 inch either a hard drive or SSD, whatever you prefer. So that's really nice to expand past what this little M.2 will offer if you want to go ahead and put like a 4 terabyte drive in there so you can store a whole bunch of media to use it as a media server or to just host or store really whatever you need. So for now, I'm gonna slide that back and actually flip it over and try to open up the back and see what that looks like. So I got a little screwdriver here and let's pop off this back. All right, so I went ahead and got all the screws out. It was kind of a pain using this little tiny thing because they were uh, in there pretty tight. So we're gonna go ahead and pull this off now. You do need to be careful because the IO shield does fold back here. So just make sure that you don't bend it. Pop it off and set that down here. And on the back, there's not really too much going on. We can see kind of the uh, cooling mechanism here. Has a little fan, metal heat sink here. You can see if you did want to, there are screws, so you could go ahead and take all this off if you want to, and actually get down and see your CPU. I'm not 100% sure, but being that this is a mobile processor, it's probably soldered in, so you can't really change it anyways. 
But it is really good knowing how accessible this is, especially on the top here, that what you're actually gonna wanna get into is extremely easy to get to. So you can see if I go ahead and put that back on real quick, it just latches in there like that. And you can just push that and pull it off. Easy peasy. So now let's actually go ahead, put this back together and see how the device performs. All right, so we just booted into the system for the first time. I went ahead and pulled some things so we could do some testing of the gaming performance. Now I have the computer right here and you can see it pretty good because I hooked it up to a capture card. So you guys will be able to see everything in near full quality. And you can see right here that we are running Windows 10 Pro out of the get-go, so that is what it comes with. And you can see the specs that I talked about earlier. It is the Ryzen 5 Pro. 2500U and it is using Radeon Vega mobile graphics. So like I said, the very first thing we're gonna do is test some of the gaming performance. And I'm gonna test this first with my favorite game and that is Fall Guys. So let's go ahead and launch that. Now on boot up of this game, I do kind of hear the fan cranking up a bit. It's not too loud, but it's right next to my ear. So it is kind of loud for where I'm sitting. You might hear it on the mic, but if you do have this like mounted behind your monitor, or slightly out of the way, you probably would barely even hear it. So let's go ahead and start and let's jump into the settings. You can see I do have the frame rate up here, so you will be able to actually see the performance while I'm kind of going through this real quick. So let's go into options and see what our video is at. So we are running 1080p, uh, windowed, vsync on, full res, medium shadow detail. So let's just go ahead and keep all this at the defaults and see how this works. So you can go ahead and see up here, uh, at least in the loading screen, the frame rate is 60. Now, I'm probably not gonna do very good because I haven't played this game in quite a while due to the fact that it is not natively available on Linux quite yet. So we'll, we'll see how I do. So you can see that we are hovering around the high 30s to 40s playing Fall Guys. I'm gonna come in last. Um, so I would say it's very playable, it's not top tier level graphics. This is a mobile processor with integrated graphics. But for what it is, I can say that it is very, very playable. Now I will note a little bit later, we will be jumping into Linux. So we can actually test the, uh, the main thing we're gonna test over there is the CPU performance and the temperatures of the CPU while it has load. So I do promise you guys, I'm not gonna be staying in Windows for this entire video. So in our video settings, we can see that most everything is set to high. Uh, texture detail high, high, high. So basically everything is set to high and we are running at 1080p. So let's see how this little box does here. Let's go ahead and hit play and jump into a game. All right, so now we're in the game on high settings and up at the top, it's kind of the same situation as Fall Guys with 1080p high. We're running, running actually a little bit better in this game. So we, you can see that we are running 51 frames per second. If I start moving around too much, we do jump up a little bit but not too much. Yeah, so the frame rate is hovering around 40, 40 to 50. So like I said, this is very playable. So we're back in our video settings. Let's go ahead and drop all this down. Let's go ahead and go to low, just so we can kind of see what the best that we can get out of this is. Cause low is still playable, but uh, very low just looks like crap. So now we went ahead and dropped the settings down and now we can see that we are actually getting 70 frames per second, at least when I was standing still. So there was about a, 20 frame per second improvement dropping that settings down that's still very playable so i would say this little thing actually is pretty good for gaming if your budget is tight or you want something small like this to go ahead and put in like an entertainment center or something like that or if this is your only option really this still can game and you will still have a good time playing on it all right so now what we're going to do is go ahead and test out this little device as a media server see how it can handle transcoding and streaming media to multiple devices now I do have the same 4K UHD little short film loaded up both on the computer behind me and this computer right here. And I have my system monitor right here. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and stream on both this computer and that computer and see how this device handles it. So I went ahead and just played this one and now with one thing streaming, let's see how this responds. Uh, we can see that our Wi-Fi definitely is picking up a little bit. And our CPU is basically the same as what it was. If I go over ahead, go ahead and go over here to Processes, go down to MB Server, you can see that it is not using hardly any resources. It, it is using 100 megabytes of RAM, but that is not too bad. Now if I go over to Performance, and let's play it on this device. 
So playing it on here, um, it does make the graphics card work a little bit more, but it is still not too bad at all. It's The graphics is probably working because it's actually streaming on this uh, local machine here now. But actually streaming to another device where that can actually handle a lot of the uh, transcoding over there, it seems to be working completely fine. It is doing absolutely fantastic. So this would be a perfect little option if you do want a media server that would have no issue streaming 4K video. I went ahead and moved this little machine into my fiance's office where it is gonna be her primary workstation as she is a student currently. It's probably gonna be her main computer for the next quarter until we can actually build her her own custom PC. Now what I went ahead and did was loaded up her favorite distribution, Manjaro, and what we're gonna do in this before I go ahead and give this up to her is uh, open up Caden Live and stress test this by rendering out a video. And while it renders, I'm gonna be monitoring the CPU temperatures and just the general processing load. And we're gonna see how cool this CPU will actually stay under some stress. So without further ado, let's jump on in. And I will note this is an ultra wide, so it may look kind of cut off here and there, primarily over here, because there's a lot more desktop past this. But what I did was open up BPY top, and this is how we're going to be monitoring this. So let's go ahead. I have already created the uh, Caden Live project here, so let's go ahead and open that up. And now with this, you can see my project here. It's just about three minutes of me rambling. So what we're going to do is go ahead and render this out. We're going to render this as an MP4 at full quality and hit render to file. Now while it begins to render, we're going to be able to see the CPU load, which it will be maxing out to 100% because not only do I have this rendering of video, I'm also screen recording and recording audio using this desktop. So if everything actually comes out together, it's going to be a good day. Now the one thing I'm noticing is we're not utilizing the entire CPU, which that's kind of a good thing. It's uh, sitting around 90% and our CPU temperature is creeping up a little bit. It was resting fairly low, but now it's almost to a 60 degrees Celsius. So I generally like to keep it or keep my CPUs below 80, even under high stress. Now, one thing I will point out is this is rendering incredibly slow. Personally, I wouldn't be able to use this as my primary video editing station because I heavily rely on quick render times because that's I'm doing that quite a bit. But so far, I add a lot of the general computing tasks that we looked at, like light gaming, the uh, media server thing, it would be perfect for that. And as I was mentioning, my uh, fiance's use case, literally the only thing she's going to be doing is within Google Chrome. So with what she needs it for, this computer is actually really, really powerful. <laughs> Jumping back over to our little system monitor here, uh, it was at 59 about a minute ago, and it's just now to 60. So I know it hasn't been that long, but the little fan in there and the heat sink is doing a pretty good job of not having it skyrocket super quick. You can even see there, it's kind of hovering and dropping from 60 to 61 degrees Celsius. So it's been a couple more minutes, and we can see that the CPU is up 1 degree Celsius. So with a process like this writing at about basically 90 to 100% CPU utilization, this little fan is doing a very good job of keeping it in a safe temperature range. So even though it's not super powerful, rendering out a three minute video has taken a good chunk of time so far. I'm not actually gonna be able to finish this, but it's doing really good of making sure that the CPU is not gonna to get too hot and it's gonna last a while. And that really was one of the big things that I was concerned about because this is such a small little box, but even with that, it does have good airflow on the bottom and the fan, I could hear it cranked up going pretty quick right now uh, but even though it is the fan is full throttling it's still not super loud so overall I'm just simply impressed and being the fact that I am a Ryzen fanboy it's cool that I can have a little Ryzen CPU in this little computer so first I'm sorry for the audio quality real quick I was just wrapping up and I figured you guys might want to see this I'm gonna do a quick little boot test here well boot speed test so you can see how quick it boots so three two one click. Oh, I, pu I pushed on it so it popped up one of the things. So, push that back down in there. There we go. It's booting. You don't need to look at me while it boots. Oh, 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 there we go. Dun, dun, dun. Stop the clock. This part does not count.
and you're in. So yeah, pretty quick. I'm not sure exactly how long that was, but I will have the time right here. Uh, the question I have for you all is, what are your computer specs? What processor are you running? How much RAM do you have? I've always been kind of curious what the actual system specifications are for the people who watch my videos. It would just be kind of a cool thing to know. I know that if I didn't need to render out videos or do anything heavy like that, this little machine would actually be perfect for me. But with that aside, I do hope you enjoyed this kind of format of video going over some hardware. I do really enjoy this. It's just a little bit more expensive to play with or to have the opportunity to play with hardware like this. Uh, other than that, I do hope you have a beautiful day. Please subscribe, ring that bell to make sure you do not miss any future videos like this. Uh, like it, comment again, have a great day, and goodbye. <laughs>